Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello, and welcome to Auto Line Daily. It's Tuesday, the 30th of July, and I'm Drew Winner from Ward's Auto, filling in for John today. We'll take a look at Nissan's new small commercial van in a little bit, but first, today's top stories. Chrysler reported its second quarter earnings this morning, and the numbers look pretty good, sort of. The company sold 660,000 cars and trucks worldwide in the last three months, up almost 5% compared to a year ago. But its revenue shot up by 7% to nearly $18 billion. That means the company was getting much better pricing for the vehicles it sold. Chrysler posted an operating profit of $808 million, up 6.5%, and a net profit of $507 million, up a whopping 16%. On the face of it, these are pretty good numbers, up solidly from a year before. But Chrysler clearly has room for improvement. Its profit margins are less than half of what Ford posted. Lackluster sales of the Dodge Dart and the delayed Jeep Cherokee are just two reasons why Chrysler is not hitting its full potential. A few weeks back, we reported that GM is delaying the launch of the next Chevy Cruze and now the company is postponing another vehicle. Reuters reports that the next generation Chevy Sonic, which is still known as the Aveo in other markets, will be delayed until 2016. Originally, it was scheduled to be introduced in 2015. Instead, the next Spark will debut in 2015. GM says it will continue to build those cars in South Korea. BMW pulled out all the stops with the public introduction of its i3 electric car, the first mass production car with a predominantly carbon fiber structure. It simultaneously unveiled a production version to the media in New York, London, and Beijing with top company executives in each city. BMW justifies the cost of carbon fiber, claiming its light weight allows it to use a smaller battery pack. Sure enough, the i3 has a normal driving range of 80 to 100 miles with a 22 kilowatt battery, about half the size that was used in the Mini E, a smaller electric vehicle that delivered about the same driving range. BMW will also offer a two-cylinder gasoline engine packaged under the rear cargo area as a range extender They'll add another 80 miles of range to the car. No word yet on the price of the range extender, but we'll have much more information on the car in upcoming shows. Tier 1 supplier ZF opened the doors of its brand new manufacturing facility in South Carolina last week. The plant is one of the company's 125 facilities worldwide and will be used to build 8 and 9 speed transmissions. The company will also invest an additional $215 million to expand the plant to produce 1.2 million transmissions a year. The all-new 9-speed, which is available in the Range Rover Evoque, allows direct multiple gear shifts, reduces fuel consumption by up to 16% compared with a 6-speed transmission, and even though it's a front-drive unit, can be used for all-wheel drive and hybrid applications. The Autoline crew got to test the 9-speed, says it shifts very smoothly, and also like that the tack sat noticeably below 2,000 RPM at 70 miles per hour. But they also found the 9-speed to be a little slow on initial takeoff. Look for more on ZF and its products in upcoming episodes of AutoLine Daily. Porsche held a fundraising event at the Silverstone Raceway in England over the weekend to help celebrate the 50th anniversary of the 911. The German automaker asked owners to bring their personal 911s for a lap around the Grand Prix circuit. Just over 1,200 of the iconic sports cars showed up, which makes this the largest ever gathering of the car. And based on the video from YouTube subscriber Shmi150, it looks like every version of the 911 ever made showed up as well. I'm Sean McElroy in San Diego, California. Nissan's going big into cargo by going small. That report coming up next. Here's one of the great things about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. Excellent traction. Do you need a ladder? Yes, I do. Okay. Come on in. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Nissan introduced the NV cargo van a few years back, but they were all pretty big for the typical small business owner. That's why it's adding the smaller NV200 to its North American lineup. 
Customers are getting smarter about what kind of vehicle they use for type of jobs. Typically, they've been using a full-size product to do very simple repair jobs or to drive to a customer's location for a quote. They're getting a little bit smarter. They're gonna take part of their fleet and convert them into something that's more efficient, small footprint, good fuel economy, low total cost of ownership. And we are very positive about this new segment emerging in the US. The NV200 is a cargo-only van that comes equipped with a two-liter four-cylinder engine mated to a CVT transmission that Nissan believes is the right combination for its target customer. The hallmark of the product is its compact proportions, a very small footprint, large interior volume, almost 123 cubic foot of uh, cargo space on the inside, but the way the interior is designed is very efficient. Um, the wheelhouses have been redesigned to be very compact and not intrude into the cargo area. We have adopted the, this idea of um, integrated mounting points in the cargo area for upfits. A lot of commercial customers use racks and bins inside their van to customize it for their vocational needs. So we have integrated those, those points inside the cargo area. The NV200 is built at Nissan's plant in Cuernavaca, Mexico, and it has a starting price just under $20,000. Fully loaded, you're gonna be just over $23,000, and it's in stores right now. In San Diego, California, I'm Sean McElroy for AutoLine Daily. And don't forget the car management briefing seminars are coming up next week in Traverse City. Wards Auto will have a team of reporters there once again producing the Wards Auto Show Dailies on site with the most complete daily coverage of the events and sessions, plus the latest updates on wardsauto.com. And if you're not already getting our free e-newsletters with the latest analysis and commentaries on what's going on in the automotive world, go to wardsauto.com and sign up now. And just a reminder before I sign off, you're not going to want to miss this week's AutoLine After Hours. John and Peter's guest for the show will be the one and only Bob Lutz, who will be talking about his new book, Icons and Idiots, plus a whole lot more. So tune in this Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time for the best insider discussion in the industry. But that wraps up this show. I'm Drew Winter from Wards Auto. Thanks for watching and have a great day.